Hello, and welcome to this presentation on Medicaid Eligibility Basics, brought to you by Disability Rights New Jersey and the New Jersey Council on Developmental Disabilities. That's me. My name is Michael Brower, and I'm your presenter today. I am the legal director here at Disability Rights New Jersey. It's my job to supervise the legal work that we do on behalf of people with disabilities, both individuals and at a systemic level. Disability Rights New Jersey, if you're not familiar, is a private nonprofit agency designated as the protection and advocacy system for people with disabilities here in the state. Our mission is to preserve and advance the human, civil, and legal rights of people with disabilities. We do that by monitoring for and investigating for abuse and neglect against people with disabilities in any setting where they are served. We provide individual legal representation to people with disabilities who need legal help in an area that is one of our goals or objectives set by the Board of Directors. We also conduct systemic advocacy on behalf of people with disabilities in matters that affect the population as a whole. One of the most important things that we do is providing educational training and outreach assistance to people with disabilities so that everybody knows they're right. This webinar today is an example of that kind of education activity. Today, we're gonna to be talking about very important Medicaid rules and rights. Medicaid is a very large and important program that provides health insurance for over 2 million New Jerseyans. But beyond health insurance, Medicaid also provides services and supports that people with disabilities rely on to live in their own homes or integrated community-based settings. So our goals today are to take away three specific learning objectives. First, to be able to identify the different Medicaid eligibility groups and to understand what that term means, to be able to identify the benefits that are available under each Medicaid eligibility group, and finally, to understand the very important legal requirement that prior to any Medicaid eligibility termination, that the state review all possible eligibility groups before the termination takes place. There are multiple Medicaid eligibility groups. And a Medicaid eligibility group, which is commonly abbreviated a MEG or an MEG, you can think of it like a doorway into the Medicaid system. For most of the doors, they'll lead into the same plan, which is called the State Plan A. You don't have to worry about that. We can call that Medicaid for the rest of our presentation. But for most of the doors, you get Medicaid. And Medicaid, you can think of as medical insurance, right? Paying for doctors, prescriptions. Uh, hospital visits, but Medicaid also comes with other benefits like the personal care benefit. It's, that's an aid to assist people with the activities of daily living in their own homes. It also comes with an adult medical daycare for those who need it. Uh, these are benefits that would not normally be found in your typical health insurance plan. The only outlier on the screen is a door that's all the way to the left of your screen with that blue marking and the not equal to. That's the Medicare savings programs. Medicaid savings programs are a Medicaid program, but instead of providing the full scope of Medicaid benefits, the insurance, the scripts, personal care, adult medical day, hospitalization coverage, all the Medicare savings program door gives you are subsidies on a Medicare program. That means payment of things like the Medicare premium, Medicare cost share, or the Medicare copay. So that is an outlier, and you'll notice that it doesn't fall under this umbrella which has the label NJ Family Care. In New Jersey, we call our Medicaid program NJ Family Care. We call some other programs NJ Family Care too, so it can be a little confusing. I'll try to specify as we're talking when there's an NJ Family Care program that doesn't have a Medicaid quality to it. So that, that makes sense to you. Before anybody loses Medicaid eligibility. So if you're somebody already on Medicaid, the state has to review every year whether you're still eligible. And if they want to terminate you, they have to check if you're not eligible under your current door, if you're potentially eligible under a different door. And in fact, they have to check every door first before terminating any person from Medicaid. There are protections in the federal law. There are documentations at the sub-regulatory level in the state and there are case law in the state of New Jersey from our appellate division that talks about the requirement for the state to review every eligibility door before terminating anyone's eligibility. 
and this review is supposed to happen before termination takes place. Sometimes there's a problem, and sometimes you might need the help of a lawyer. I'm going to give information at the end of the presentation about how you might need, how you may be able to contact a lawyer for assistance. I want to review the individual Medicaid doors one by one so that you know not just what a Medicaid eligibility group is, but so that you're familiar with the eligibility criteria so you might be able to understand where you, a loved one, or somebody that you're working with might fit in the Medicaid eligibility scheme. I want to start with the simplest door, which is SSI-related Medicaid. In New Jersey, if somebody receives SSI, that's Supplemental Security Income, through the Social Security Administration, they are automatically eligible for Medicaid in New Jersey. They don't need to submit a separate application. They just receive Medicaid as a matter of course. In fact, so long as they remain on SSI, they continue receiving Medicaid without any kind of annual redetermination or renewal application. There is a identical door called Medicaid only. And this is for people who meet all of the SSI criteria, but do not receive the cash benefit. To specify those criteria, this means that somebody would have to be 65 years old or older, blind or disabled, as determined by the Social Security Administration or New Jersey's state medical review team, and have income in 2024 that's less than $974.25 per month for an individual, $1,440.35 per month as a couple, and have resources, meaning money in the bank, stocks, bonds, retirement savings, and so forth, any valuable asset that is worth less than $2,000 for an individual or worth less than $3,000 for couples. Somebody's home and a single car do not count towards those resource limits. If you meet all of those criteria, both in terms of age or disability, income, and resources, you can be eligible for the Medicaid-only eligibility door. If you're eligible for SSI Medicaid or the Medicaid only eligibility door, you can receive Medicaid Plan A, which in our state is the Medicaid plan, the full set of Medicaid services and supports available to anyone who's enrolled in Medicaid. To apply, if you don't receive SSI, you have to affirmatively fill out an application. The link to that application is on the website and people can also apply at their local county welfare agency or commonly known as the County Board of Social Services. If you receive SSI, you do not need to apply. That SSI application serves as your Medicaid application automatically here in New Jersey. For some people who receive SSI, they may stop receiving that if their parents die, retire, or become disabled themselves. And in some circumstances, that disabled child, and child here is not a, a minor child, but that is the child of a parent, if they start receiving their parents' SSDI benefit or Social Security retirement benefit because they are disabled, it may increase their income to the point where they lose their SSI. Because SSI comes with automatic Medicaid eligibility here in New Jersey, losing it means you would have to find another way to maintain Medicaid eligibility separate and apart from that SSI. One of the ways, if you're a disabled adult child receiving a parent's Medicaid or parent's social security benefit, that is, is to be a section 1634 disabled adult child. There are very specific criteria. You have to be an adult, meaning 18 years old or older. You have to have been disabled or blind before you turned age 22. You have to have at one point received SSI because of your own disability and then have lost it because you started receiving a benefit on your parents' social security record. And that's because of the parent having retired, passed away, or become disabled themselves. And now you receive a derivative benefit from your parents' account. You still have to have resources less than $2,000, meaning money in the bank, savings, retirement, other kind of assets, not including any money that's kept in a special needs trust or an ABLE. And you still have to be financially eligible for the Medicaid-only door in every way except that you receive your parents' Social Security benefit. If this is the case, the application process usually requires the submission of a request for information, meaning the state would reach out affirmatively by mail to ask for information about whether or not the loss of SSI 
for a youth or a adult was related to the parent's death, retirement, or disability. The next eligibility group we're going to talk about is called New Jersey Care, also known as aged, blind, or disabled. That can be a little bit confusing because the aged, blind, and disabled label actually applies to multiple eligibility groups, but most commonly it refers to New Jersey Care in common talk. There's a few specific eligibility guidelines. Like Medicaid only, somebody has to be either 65 years old or older, or blind, or disabled at any age. The income limit is higher than the Medicaid only income limit. This one is in 2024, $1,255 per month for an individual or $1,704 for a couple. These numbers are linked to 100% of the federal poverty line and are adjusted every year. The resource limits are also higher than the Medicaid only door. Here, an individual could have up to $4,000 of resources or $6,000 if we're talking about a couple. And again, a home, a single home and one car do not count towards those resource limits. To apply for the New Jersey Care Program, one could go in person to their county welfare agency for a paper application, or they could go online to the website where the link is there. Like a Medicaid-only beneficiary or a 1634 adult disabled child, the benefit plan here is Plan A, New Jersey Medicaid. Doctor's visits, medications and prescriptions, hospitalization, personal care assistance, and the adult medical day program are all part of Medicaid Plan A, so you get New Jersey Medicaid. All these doors lead to the same benefit plan. The next eligibility group we're going to talk about has multiple names, but all the names refer to the same thing. We sometimes call this the ACA expansion, that's the Affordable Care Act expansion group, the MAGI, Medicaid eligibility group, or the Obamacare eligibility group. Different names, same program. There's a few specific criteria, and it's important to know that the reason this Medicaid eligibility group exists is because it was part of the Obamacare Affordable Care Act uh, expansion of health coverage for Americans with lower incomes. And so it was meant specifically to provide health coverage. There's a few exceptions that will make more sense in that context. First, for people who are between ages 21 and 64, there is a income limit that is tied to your adjusted gross income or your modified adjusted gross income. You can think about line 11 on the IRS form 1040. In 2024, the high income limit was $1,732 per month for an individual or $2,351 a month for a couple of modified adjusted gross income, which is 138% of the federal poverty line. Again, this is a higher income limit than any of the doors we've talked about so far. What sets the ACA expansion, MAGI, Obamacare eligibility group apart is there is no resource limit. You could have a million dollars of money in the bank. As long as your income is below the thresholds, you can be eligible for Medicaid through this eligibility group. There are different criteria for children. There is a more forgiving uh, income limit for children who are under the age of 21. We'll talk about that a little bit later. There are a couple very important warnings here. They are in red on the screen. Because this program was intended to provide health coverage to uninsured Americans and lower income Americans, once you turn 65, you're no longer eligible to get Medicaid through this eligibility door. That's because once you reach age 65, you're eligible for Medicare and you can get health insurance in a different way. The other time that you should be worried about not being able to come in through this door is if you are eligible to receive Medicare through any other process. For example, if you receive SSDI because you are disabled after working or because you receive SSDI on a parent's work record because you are disabled and so are they, you can be eligible for Medicare after two years of getting SSDI. At that point, once you are eligible to receive Medicare because of your SSI, you are no longer eligible to use this Medicaid eligibility group, and you would have to find a different eligibility group if you wanted to keep your Medicaid. To become enrolled on the MAGI Obamacare Affordable Care Act eligibility group, you go online, njfamilycare.org, where there's an online application. 
You can also apply like the other programs at the county welfare agency or the Board of Social Services in your county. The benefit for this uh, eligibility group is called the Alternative Benefits Plan. It is identical in every way to Medicaid Plan A, which means you come in this door, you get Medicaid. The next eligibility door is one of the more expansive and interesting eligibility groups called New Jersey Workability. This is a program intended to provide Medicaid for people with disabilities who are working and earning higher incomes than any of the programs we've talked about so far, but who still need to keep their benefits because they don't earn enough to pay their own. There's some very specific eligibility criteria here as well. First, you have to be older than age 16, meaning age 16 or older. You have to be working either full-time or part-time with some proof of employment. Typically, you have to be able to document your employment and if you're self-employed, meaning you, know, you work your own business, maybe you have a dog walking business, you mow neighbor's lawns, you have a small child care operation, you have to have documentable income that's at least $400 and you have to file your federal tax return. They also have to have a disability determination, either from the Social Security Administration, finding that you're disabled, or from New Jersey's medical review team. This is where the program gets exciting. After you pass those eligibility requirements of being at least age 16, working with documentable income and having a disability determination, there is no earned income limit. There's no unearned income limit, meaning you can make as much as you can make and you can bring in as many benefits like Social Security, disability, alimony, survivor's benefits, unemployment payments, you name it. There is no cap and there's also no cap on resources, meaning you could have millions and millions of dollars in the bank. One important note is that if you have higher income, premiums might apply, and those premiums are not quite clear. They're still being set here in 2024, but once they're published, we expect that they will be scaled, meaning the higher the income above the poverty line, the higher the contribution in the form of a premium might be. But you should know that all those eligibility criteria come with no financial eligibility criteria. You can make or have as much money as you want. You can apply for workability online at njfamilycare.org. Uh, you can also apply in person at the County Welfare Agency or the Board of Social Services in your county. If you go through the workability eligibility group, you get Medicaid. It's the alternative benefits plan. It is identical in every way to state plan A. I'm going to switch gears now and talk about some special Medicaid eligibility groups that are made for people with disabilities in particular. The first is the Managed Long-Term Services and Supports Waiver Eligibility Group. This is a very particularized waiver program, meaning it's an experimental program that comes with different requirements than the normal Medicaid program, but it also comes with different benefits in addition to the State Plan A, Medicaid benefit. Let's talk about the eligibility and then we'll talk about some of the benefits. First, there's a financial eligibility component. Income for an individual needs to be less than $2,829 per month. Resources have to be less than $2,000, meaning money in the bank, savings, retirement, valuable assets. There's a very critical piece here is the five year look back, meaning that at the time you apply for MLTSS, the state will look backwards in time for the past five years and see if you transferred any valuable assets for less than fair market value. If you did, the state may apply a penalty period, meaning you may be ineligible for certain payment services or even potentially eligibility if you say transferred a house that was worth a million dollars for free to look like you are now down under the $2,000 resource limit. There's also the ability in the MLTSS system to use what's called a qualified income trust if you have excess income or spousal impoverishment protection, spousal impoverishment protections, that is to reduce your income if you are over that $2,829 per month limit. Those are the financial criteria, but there's also a specialized clinical eligibility criteria because remember I said this is a program specifically for people with disabilities, not just folks with low income or who may be over the age of 65. If you're an adult, and in this world that means 21 years old or older, the clinical criteria is that you have to meet the nursing home level of care, which means you need hands-on assistance with three activities of daily living. You need hands-on help with bathing, dressing, and ambulation, or any other three. 
or if you have a cognitive impairment that you need at least supervision or cueing, meaning oversight and reminders, and at least three other activities of daily living. If you're younger than 21, meaning you're 20 years old or younger, there's a more stringent clinical criteria. You have to meet the skilled nursing level of care, meaning that you need private duty nursing. You have a skilled nursing need that a nurse must address on a day-to-day -day basis if you're younger than 20 years old. The financial criteria apply in either circumstance. To apply for MLTSS, you can go to the Aging Disability Resource Center, the phone number is on the screen, the Office of Community Choice Options called OCO or OCCO will do the clinical screen to make sure you meet the clinical criteria and the application online at the County Welfare Agency will do the financial screen to make sure you meet the financial eligibility. If you're currently enrolled in Medicaid, you can contact your managed care organization for a clinical eligibility screen and a referral to complete the full financial eligibility screen as well. The reason that you might want to be on MLTSS instead of a different Medicaid eligibility door, first, it may be the only eligibility door available based on your financial or clinical situation. And second, MLTSS comes with additional services and supports. The dictionary of those services and supports is available online, but I can give you a quick overview. Things that go beyond your normal health insurance coverage. You know, we talked about how Medicaid normally covers hospital visits, doctor visits, prescriptions, co-pays, even personal care or adult medical day care. MLTSS adds even more services on top of that benefit plan. MLTSS can provide things like home delivered meals, home or vehicle modifications for someone with disabilities to make their home or vehicle more accessible to them. It can include things like snow shoveling or home chore services, deep cleaning, additional personal care assistant hours, things that would normally take somebody with a disability and give them the question, do I have to move to a nursing home? These are the kind of services designed to help people live in their own homes in the community for longer. The next Medicaid eligibility group that I want to talk about, specific to people with disabilities, are the DDD waiver programs. Like the MLTSS waiver programs, these are specialized programs meant for people here with developmental disabilities. There are a few different levels of support within the DDD waivers. There's a community care program, there's a supports program, and there's a supports plus PDN program. For all of them, the financial eligibility is the same. You have to have income less than $2,829 per month, which is exactly the same as the MLTSS income limit. You have to have resources less than $2,000, which is exactly the same as the MLTSS resource limit. And there's one extra bonus in the DDD world is that social security that is derived from a parent's work record, meaning if somebody starts receiving their parent's social security or a portion of their parent's social security benefit because the parent retires, dies, or becomes disabled themselves, in the DDD world, under these waiver programs, that parental social security can be completely disregarded, even if you are not a disabled adult child under the 1634 analysis that we talked about earlier in this presentation. The big difference is that you might never have been eligible for SSI and started receiving your parents' social security disability payment after the age of, let's say, 18. Uh, and you might still be able to have that income disregarded here under this particular waiver eligibility analysis. In addition to the financial eligibility, there are specific clinical eligibility criteria for people in these waiver programs. You need to have a functional disability that was manifest, meaning it appeared or was diagnosed or evident before you turned 21 years old, and that affects at least three areas of your life. Things like self-sufficiency, economics, education or learning, uh, self-care. But the clinical, the clinical criteria analysis is a little bit complex and probably too complex for us to go into great depth in this presentation. But you should know that that eligibility review is completed by the Division of Developmental Disabilities using a tool called the New Jersey Comprehensive Assessment Tool that would ask questions about your functional criteria in all the different areas of life, and that would make an assessment on whether you meet that functional eligibility criteria. The supports program, if you meet that criteria to be eligible for DDD, has no waiting list and you can be enrolled right away if you apply. The supports plus PDM program similarly has no waiting list and comes with all the community-based services and supports of the supports program, plus 
access to private duty nursing if you need a skilled nurse day to day. The last waiver program, the community care program, is more comprehensive than the other two. It does not include a specific private duty nursing benefit, but it comes with more and more well-funded services to help people with developmental disabilities live in the setting of their choice. One of the additional benefits are residential supports in places like a licensed setting, group homes, licensed supervised apartments, or if somebody lives in their own home or a family home, additional levels of service and support to keep that individual living in the setting of their choice there too. To meet the clinical criteria for the community care program, not only do you have to pass the clinical eligibility test, but you also have to meet the ICF or the intermediate care facility level of care. Again, it's a little bit too complex for it to go into, but know that that means that that would mean somebody has a developmental disability and, but for the services they get through the waiver system, might need to live in a state-run developmental center, a large institutional setting. Again, this is a program meant to provide those kind of services for people who don't want to move to a large institution, but would prefer to live in their own home or a group home instead. To apply for the DDD waiver programs, again, you can go to njfamilycare.org. There's an online application. You can also apply at the County Welfare Agency or the local Board of Social Services. And there are more detailed instructions about the eligibility criteria at the website that's up on the screen, which would take you through to the Division of Developmental Disabilities, who operates this waiver program. I said before that I would revisit the issue of special eligibility rules that apply to children. There are a few up on the screen, and it's worth talking about them because there are some changes if you're looking at a child who typically is either under the age of 18 or 21, depending on which program we're talking about. For the New Jersey Family Care Medicaid, the MAGI, Obamacare, ACA eligibility group, remember when I talked about that and I said that it was based on 138% of the federal poverty line? If you are doing that analysis for a child in a higher earning income household, that number goes up to 147% of the federal poverty line. I gave one example. If there's a child in a household of four, that household could have income up to $3,822 a month for the child to be eligible for this eligibility group. Adults in that household would not be eligible for Medicaid through this program. There's another NJ Family Care program called the Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP. This is not a Medicaid program. CHIP is a different form of health insurance specifically for uninsured children. It has much higher income limits, but it also has a scheme of premiums for people who are higher earners or children from higher income households. The maximum income for a CHIP beneficiary is to live in a household with 355% income or income at 355% of the federal poverty limit for a household of that size. Again, this is not a Medicaid program but I wanted to talk about it because it does come with the New Jersey Family Care label on it. It does not come with the Plan A benefits. It would not make somebody eligible through the Medicaid system. And there are different protections if somebody loses eligibility in terms of review, termination, and notice. We talked about some of these before, but it's worth mentioning that the MLTSS program has a specific clinical criteria that applies to children who are age 21 or younger. And that is that you need a skilled nursing need. You need to have a private duty nurse. There are two other Medicaid eligibility groups that are specific to children and children only. One is the Children's Support Services Program for Severe Emotional Disturbance. This is operated primarily through the Children's System of Care and Perform Care. This is an operational waiver program and the application process typically runs through the Children's System of Care and Perform Care to screen children who meet the clinical criteria of having a severe emotional disturbance and to meet the financial income criteria, which is based only on the child's income and whether or not that is below the 300% of the federal benefit rate or approximately $2,800 per month of the child's income alone. The second specific waiver program for children is the Children's Support Services Program for IDD or Intellectual Developmental Disability. This program is not fully operational. It has been approved from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services since 2017. But as of the date of this recording in March of 2024, the program is not fully operational, meaning that individuals cannot apply, cannot be screened, or cannot enter this program. 
but you should know that it exists. Should it be the only possible way to go through to get Medicaid? It is a door that is at least on paper in existence. So that wraps up our conversation for today. I hope that you learned a little bit with me about what it is when we talk about a Medicaid eligibility group. I hope that you identified some of the different Medicaid eligibility groups that we have here in New Jersey to get you into the Medicaid program. And I hope you understand that getting in through any of those Medicaid eligibility groups ultimately gets you essentially the same service package that is Medicaid State Plan A. And if you're eligible through MLTSS, the additional services available there or through one of the DDD waiver programs to the additional supports and services for people with intellectual or developmental disabilities available there. The only outliers are the Medicare savings programs and the children's health insurance program. Those come with that label of NJ Family Care, but they are not access to the full Medicaid system. And in fact, for CHIP, it is not a Medicaid program at all. This might all feel a little bit overwhelming or confusing, and that's okay. It takes a while to learn these things, even for us who work in this field every day. And so I would say to you, if you're worried about your Medicaid eligibility, maybe you've got a termination notice, maybe you've heard from a provider that your eligibility is ending, or you're applying and you're just not sure where you might fit into the system, please reach out to Disability Rights in Jersey. We're here to help. Our contact information is on the screen, including our toll-free intake line, our email address, our Facebook and Twitter accounts, and our website, disabilityrightsnj.org. And finally, I want to thank the Council on Developmental Disabilities here in New Jersey for their support in producing this program. Uh, the contact information for the Council is up on the screen. Uh, the Council is a wealth of resources for people with developmental disability, people with developmental disabilities, their family and loved ones. Uh, NJCDD.org is the website there. Thank you all for sticking with me through this webinar. I hope you learned something. I hope it was valuable to you. And I wish you all the best of luck and health. Thank you.